Hi Dan, here's Scooter Magazine. Uh, right, I'm just on with doing a couple of engine builds, uh, which I'll do videos on those separately, the BGM 225 and the TS1240. Um, but whilst I was on with those, it just occurred to me I could probably do a helpful video. Just in regard to crank truing stands, um, they're not expensive. You can get incredibly expensive ones if you want, and if your budget allows for that, go for it. But you can pick these up um, for not very much money. And if you are building um, engines on a consistently repetitive basis, whether that be you know commercial level, then you sh certainly should have some of these. But even if it's just at club level or you know helping friends or for yourself, you build a you know um, a lot of engines yourself. Trying to build an engine without a set of crank truing stand, tr crank truing stands. In my opinion, it's like trying to build a house without a spirit level. It's it's a measuring device, and one thing you cannot see without one of these is whether or not the crank you're fitting is true or not. And these stands, this one came from JB Fabrications, that's um, jbfab.co.uk. They're about 65 quid, so they're not very much money. Um, took me about just 10 minutes just to build them up and um, get my digital vernie callips out, make sure that they were set up perfectly square and whatnot. One of these dial gauges, I think I got this off eBay for about 12 quid or something, magnetic base. And then you adjust it up to the width of the crank that you're going to be using and then pop it in here and you measure um, the tolerances um, that you're going to uh, true it to. Now I haven't got a crank here which is actually, this is a brand new crank, but I always check them anyway, no matter who they come from, which brand they are, which manufacturer, just check them. It's, it's, it does happen that they do come from manufacturers out of true, um, more often than not though, when you're rebuilding an engine for somebody and they've already got a crank in there, but you're rebuilding the engine for other reasons, whether it be tuning or a change of kit or whatever, bearing changes, and you have to take their old crank out uh, and you want to ensure that the crank they've got in there is true. And if it isn't, then adjust it. And it's actually quite a simple process to do. And it involves either a big hammer or a vice and uh, a device of some kind like um, this. You can use a crowbar, something like that, or wedges um, like chisels and a one but Roughly speaking, the process is Get your crank on the truing stand. There's a couple of main ways that the crank can be out of true. The worst one is if it's spreading on the webs because that means just you've got a very poor interference fit on the pin and realistically if it's spreading on the cranks then it's probably junk. Um, if it's twisted, it could be that the two webs with the, with the pin at the top there, they could be spread at the bottom, in which case they'll want nipping in in the vise, or they could be um, pinched in at the bottom in which case they'll want, um, you know, uh, a, a chisel or a wedge or, or a prying device to wedge them back out again. But the other more common way is that the, one of the webs, or both of the webs on the pin, are oscillating slightly. So they're just slightly out of true on the pin. And in that case, then that's where you use the hammer and you will essentially, you'll read this dial gauge and you can tell if it's if it's pinching at the 90 degree mark sorry if it's if it's if the dial gauge is going up and down at the 90 degree mark then it's usually because the webs are oscillated slightly if it's moving up and down at the top or the bottom it's because the webs are pinched out or pinched in and if it's doing both it's because both are happening and then you've got a bit more work to do um, but essentially then what you can do is if it's spread wide at the bottom, you can just simply pinch it in in the vise, re-measure it, and keep just gradually, gently doing that until it pinches in the way you want it to. If it's too tight at the bottom, you would go the other way. You could gently hold it in the vise and either just pry those apart or use some wedges and just gently tap into it to spread the webs and re-measure, re-measure, re-measure until it's correct. The other way is if these have oscillated, then you will hold the crank gently and just tap one of the webs with the uh, lightweight adjuster. Uh, you can go too far and then in which case you'll switch around and tap back again. And once you get those trued up then I like to measure at the furthest point of the crank um, just because if you get it true at that point you're absolutely certain it's true at the closer point where some other people measure it. But I always measure it at the furthest end. And, um, and then you can see that on the dial gauge. And if you can get within three one hundredths of a mil or whatever then it's you know, some people 
go to two to one and some people aren't happy until it's absolutely zero but you can spend a lot of time doing that they're easily knocked out of true this is why you've got to be very careful and use the various fitting devices and tools which i use to draw the cranks through you don't want to be knocking them in and you've got to be basically very um, respectful and careful with the crank but essentially 65 quid for that and 10 15 quid for that you can measure every crank that you put in to any engine you build and even if you're not competent or confident enough to do the hammering and adjusting yourself you at least know if it's in or out of true and then you can you know seek uh, assistance in getting it trued up um, as per requirements but to be honest if you just get yourself uh, an old silk crank or an old Italian one that's worn out pop it on the truing stand get yourself a hammer a vice and some wedges or a, or a prying device then it doesn't take very much practice for you to knock the crank in and out of true and to see how that works and to learn to do it yourself but I would heartily recommend anybody who's building engines on a regular basis to get themselves a set of crank truing uh, wheels um, whether it's the V blocks or the high end engineered um, you know knife edge rollers whatever have something to measure your work by thereby you know that whatever's going in it's going to be uh, running true okay see you on the next video <laughs>